Tell me about your writing habits or processes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you are a member of a two-person writing household, a two-writer household. I am. And uh, I think it's, it's reasonable to say that which one of you, I want you to tell me which one of you is better and why your writing and writing habits are better than the other person, who I'll let you name if you want, but that's <laughs> up to you. I know that before we began this interview, I was saying that I was the better writer, but I'm not going to say that on camera. But, uh, <laughs> Um, my husband is Andrew Hudgens, he's a poet, and poetry right out of the gate calls for different kinds of writing habits. Uh, prose writers really need to just sit in the chair and, and make one sentence follow another. Mm -hmm. And the energy of poetry is a lot more up and down. Um, and so I tend to be at the desk by 7.30, and if it's a teaching day, I'm usually done by 11 because I, I have to be in to teach. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's my writing time every day, every day, every day. And uh, mm -hmm. I knock off on Sundays. Okay. Uh, and and he is much more up and down and up and down and up and down all day long. He's like a flea. Okay. So uh, the the comparison is you're you're the worker and he's the flea. So that <laughs> I think works well. That there's nothing dismissive about that. As a when you're a creative writing professor, as mm -hmm. you are, do when this book, what did you take away from it that you took back to your students and said, here's something that, having written this new book, that I really want you to think about as you're writing? Hmm. One of the things that was such a gift in writing this book was climbing into the mind of a character who was born at the end of the 19th century and, and, and shaped by that community. She would have no concept of um, all of the ideas of Freud. But uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the idea of a subconscious and everything that we take for granted with that would not exist for her. Mm -hmm. And that was so interesting and so much fun and such an, a, a wonderful way to think about the world in different kind of screen. And so to answer your question specifically, um, allow the habits of your character to inform you. Learn from the characters because it'll give you a whole new way of looking at the world. In this case, does that mean sort of re rejecting Freud or <laughs> coming to a different sort of understanding? Coming of to a, what does the world look like if you don't have the concept of the subconscious, of, of mm -hmm. being driven by um, desires and motivations that you don't necessarily ever even see or comprehend? Mm -hmm. If you take that whole idea out of your mind, life becomes very different. Mm -hmm. Not less complicated, not less intelligent, but different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, not to get myself into trouble with creative writers, but um, You're I in wonder. Trouble. If, but yeah, I know already. But that seems to me like um, for someone who writes, it's a compulsion. You know, for a lot of people, describe it as this is what I do, mm -hmm. this is who I am, mm -hmm. and um, so there's. Uh, I'm curious about when you are a creative writer, what sort of delving into subconsciousness is is good. Mm -hmm. for you and what is bad for you. If you can figure out why you want to write because you want to get back at whoever was mean to you in <laughs> junior high, uh, not that that's why I do it, but if, the, uh, and I'm not a creative writer, so this is a, a question that's not really on my mind. But is that, what is your take on that? Is that something that's healthy for creative writers or not healthy? I think it's, uh, well, it, it kind of doesn't matter if it's not healthy, it's very human and it's going to mm -hmm. be there no matter what. Um, we've got all kinds of desires that bring us to uh, trying to put words on the page. Mm -hmm. And some of them are useful and some of them are not very useful. But all, all of those initial ones get burned off. It's like that's the first flare of the rocket going up. All that initial energy gets burned up really fast. And then we move to a different kind of motivation, a deeper mm -hmm. one. And it's generally quieter and more private and more fruitful. You know, uh, we, I, one of the interviews that we've done with Donald Ray Pollock, mm -hmm. I think you know, he said that to be a writer, one of the first things he had to do was train himself to sit in a chair yeah. for a long time. And I thought that was uh, great advice because even now that's not something that I can do. <laughs> There's nothing like spending, ooh, let's say a half an hour or so working on a scene to make you suddenly realize the top of the refrigerator needs dusting. Mm -hmm. Needs yeah, dusting right. right this minute. Or there's laundry to be done. There's Even if you did done. it yesterday, right. there's mm -hmm. some that you wore then mm -hmm. that might have to be redone. <laughs> Tell me about getting a book deal, uh, mm -hmm. any of the books that you've written. What advice do you have for aspiring writers? Um, 
golly, <laughs> have a good idea. <laughs> um, this, uh, the deal with this, this was the second part of a two book deal that I had with Houghton Mifflin, now Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. And I had already sold them a book of short stories, The Good Life, and they were looking for an idea for a second book, that's all, just an idea. Mm -hmm. And I ran through a couple of things and my editor quite rightly rejected them. <laughs> well, they were not good. Uh, and the only thing I had left in my brain was this idea I've been carrying around for years of writing my grandmother's story. And mm -hmm. so I started hesitantly to explain what it was and, and she immediately saw that it was just a really good story. Mm -hmm. Well, it also ends on an ambiguous note, uh, mm -hmm. a note of, um, in some ways, escape. Yeah. Literally yeah. And, and perhaps figuratively. That means sequel. <laughs> the Seamstress of Hollywood Boulevard, part Duh. two. Yeah. Uh, what, is there something else that now that you've had this character, there's nothing else in mind? She doesn't mm -mm. go on to, okay, mm -mm. Be, be part of uh, the 30s, uh, no. go through the Depression. No. Uh, no. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> What's the best part about being a writer? What's your favorite part? Going to work in your pajamas. Okay. So all those ads for going to school in your pajamas, like for Columbus State with online education, <laughs> resonate strongly with you. Deeply with me, Deeply yeah. with you. Yeah. So you'll be teaching the online <laughs> creative writing classes at OSU soon. What's the worst part? What's the hardest part? It, in the end, it's you and your love for the work, and that's it. There's no guarantee that the world's going to love it or is going to care if you ever write another word. Mm -hmm. And there's really nobody, there, there's no teacher or mom out there saying, do your work. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the editor, in the end, if you don't do it, it's just not going to care all that much. What, what, I'm curious, another thing about the editor, how, what kind of relationship do you uh -huh. have? Uh, what, you said that they rejected this, mm -hmm. this, this anonymous person. You can name. <laughs> but but what, you know, when you, they reject them quickly like that, how do you, how many times do you just keep going back to the same, well, you said this was your last idea. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, how other how how else does that impact your writing? You know, they must have said at certain times. I'm guessing I don't like this. Uh, oh, I sure. think this is bad. How do you? What kind of negotiation do you carry out with an editor? Um, if we're just talking about the development of of a storyline in a book, and, and mm -hmm. so if the editor is to say, um, I don't like what you're proposing happens at this section, mm -hmm. you know, the, the proposed love affair, let's say. Uh, then it's just an issue of figuring out what the problem is and how else it might be addressed. Mm -hmm. And often I've had the experience with editors and agents that they propose a solution that I don't like, but I can see what it is they're going for. Mm -hmm. And so I just find an alternative way to get to it that we can all agree on, that we all like. Has that worked out well? Yeah, or? Okay. yeah, yeah. They don't the, see through it occasionally and say, oh, I see, you're just trying to avoid what I want. The idea isn't that it's um, give me what I want. This mm -hmm. is not like Hollywood script doctoring. It's much more along the lines of, I don't like what's here, what about this? And I can say, well, what about this? Uh, because for whatever reason, what's there isn't working. Okay. So it's a good idea not to love your work too terribly too much. much. Okay, don't get too attached don't to Don't get now. too attached, yeah. Because you, she could be uh, taken apart at any yeah. time and put back together. Yeah, and you yourself might be the one to do that. If, mm -hmm. you, if you sit there and say, there's something bugging me about, again, whatever, chapter six, and you look at it and look at it and slowly realize the reason you don't like chapter six is that it's completely wrong from the ground up. It's just wrong, 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 and you got to redo it. That often happens. It's a good idea not to love it too much. Do you then go not go back to your books later because you might have that reaction? Or is it now that it's done, it's done, you're not going to worry about now it? Now that it's done, it's done, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. okay. That's probably the healthiest way. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> done. I'm, I'm it's not going to rewrite it. Well, you've got two copies here. Yeah. You can change <laughs> part of this right here.